Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Another week has come and gone again, and it's Wednesday, so it's time for Whip It Wednesday. I feel like a game show host. Yay! Woo! Whip It Wednesday is where I show you anything I've worked on in the craft room, where I've worked on it for just a little bit of time, or I've worked on it long enough to finish it. I haven't finished anything this week, but that's okay. Let's see what I did work on. 2019 is going to be all about charity quilts. I am turning 50 in February. I don't know where the time has gone. My kids are all grown up and out on their own. My youngest is turning 20 this year. I'm turning 50. It's crazy. But what I want to do is I want to make 50 items for charity. I'd like to make 50 quilts and then some extra things like hats or whatever. I'm basically thinking quilts and then hats for the veterans. I'm going to knit some hats for them because I enjoy knitting and a hat is a nice little simple thing to work on and you know they get cold. It's good for them to have a hat. But I started on my charity quilts. I found a pattern. It is called the Road Trip Charity Quilt by Cluck Cluck Sew. So I'll go ahead and put a link down below for you. Basically what you do is you go to, the, to your fabric store or your stash and you get 10 1 8 yard cuts of fabric. And then she gives you this little formula on how to fold your strip and how to cut it into different pieces. And then she has an example of how to sew it together. I followed her placement example because I just wanted to quick and easy quilt. I did this basically in an afternoon. It only took me a couple hours. I already had all the pieces of fabric cut out. I went into my stash and just pulled quarter yards, half yards, strips that I had. I'd already had some I Spy fabric that was cut at five inches, so I just trimmed it down to four and a half because an eighth of a yard is basically four and a half inches by the width of fabric. And when it's all said and done, I don't know if I've said this already, but it comes out to be about 36 by 40. So you just have one yard of fabric that you need to purchase for the backing. So you don't have to piece the backing or anything like that. You will need to have some extra fabric for the binding. In my stash, I have a lot of oh, chunks of fabric that are at least a yard or more. And they, oh, hi, Whiskers. <laughs> Whiskers wants to be in the Whip It Wednesday video. Hi, big girl. So anyway, that's a new one. She never jumps up on the table like that when I'm filming. But um, in my stash, I have a lot of fabric that's going to be good for the backing. There are solids and semi-solids. And I think it'll go nice where the front will be novelty type fabric with some solids thrown in. And then on the back, it'll just be a nice solid fabric. And I won't have to piece it or anything because it's a nice one yard cut. And if you want to, she also has a formula um, that if you want to make this a little bit longer, I'm sorry, I'm distracted by the fluffy cat now. You can make the quilt a little bit longer if you want to put it in a crib instead of just uh, a small quilt for a child. I'm thinking uh, our local hospital, well, it's, it's local enough, but it's about an hour drive for me, but it's, it's local and it's a children's hospital that they could use quilts like this and they could also use some for the... The isolates in the neonatal room, they like to have those little blankets that they put over the top of the isolate to block out the sun and stuff like that. So that's going to be part of my work this, this year. I, I want to do 50 quilts in 2019. And when they're small like this, I think it's going to be completely doable. But it only takes you about an hour to piece a quilt. And the quilting on this, I'll just go ahead and meander all around it and it'll be nice and quick. So I've gone, ahead to, I've gone ahead and made this one, and if Whiskers will allow it, nobody wants to see cat butt. Holy crazy girl. While I was doing it, I went ahead and I just, I cut up so much, I figured I'm just going to take all my scraps of the novelty fabric, just clear it out of the, out of my stash. So I just went and cut a whole bunch. So you have, I have four and a half inch squares. It's a free pattern and all the information will be on her blog. And by the way, if you love basic quilts and simple ones and very complex ones, check out her blog. She has tutorials. She has patterns for sale. It's just, it's an amazing blog. I've been following her for years and I really enjoy it. And then, so you have the four and a half inch squares. Then you have these because they're cut four and a half inches. So these are six inches. So I said, I just, some of them I have, like, I don't have any of these in the smaller size, but that's okay. I have some for older children and some for younger children. And then you also have 
nine inch lengths. So I have stuff for girls, stuff for boys. So there'll be a lot of this types, different types of fabric. I'll, I'll mix and match. Normally, like I said, you, you get two of the eighth yard cuts and then it's really easy to mix and match. I just try to be careful that I don't have too many of them that are actually touching. Sometimes it just happens. And since the seams on this are all offset, as you can see, the seams don't actually line up. So if you're new to quilting, this is a really good project to do. You won't have any of your seams matching up, so you don't have to worry about that. If anything's a little wonky, you're just going to trim up your edges so everything will be nice and even and it'll be fine. And then you also end up with a lot of scraps. So I went ahead and I saved all my scraps because I'll just go ahead and turn these into scrap quilts or crumb quilts and I'll still be able to use those as part of my charity projects. I'm just going to leave this here and we're going to look at the other things. Now, I haven't worked on too much this week. It's been a bit of a busy, crazy week. But I did put some more time on the three color cashmere cowl. This is where I left off last week. I've got all of the laces all finished. I've gone into the stripes. It's really kind of strange because all of these are the same. They're four rows wide all the way up. But because this one doesn't have another dark color here, it makes it look so much narrower, doesn't it? So that's it on this one. I'm just going to the last bit. There is, I'm going to be putting on the ribbing like down here. I'm going to have the ribbing up there and that's going to finish that off. And then the only thing left will be the scary part of weaving in all the ends. That's the one thing when you do a lot of things when you're changing the colors, you can't always, sometimes you can bring the yarn, you can carry it up and just change the colors here and then just weave in a couple ends but when you're having big chunks you tend not to carry the yarn up so then you have to weave in all of these ends it i'll just sit down with a movie on one night and get them all woven in and it'll go quick but that one's almost done and because this is getting close to done i've been waiting to start a new project a new knitting project i've started a shawl i love knitting shawls now this isn't going to be very exciting you're not going to see very much it's just this bit of a gray shawl. You can see some of the lace work that's starting in here. This is a garter stitch project, which basically means you only have to knit. Now you have to do some yarn overs, but that's it. We're just going to knit all the way through. Uh, there's special lace work down at the end, and I'm sure there's going to have some more fancy things down there. But the biggest chunk of this shawl is just knitting, and you're going to do a little bit of eyelet lace work in here. Okay, so this is the beach bum shawl. And I said the main part of it is going to be gray. And when I get down to this fancy lace work at the end, I'm going to be bringing this pink in. So it's going to kind of alternate and blend these two together. And then it'll finish off in the pink. And I think that's going to work, look really nice at the end. That little bit of, because not everyone likes a lot of pink, but just to have that little bit of a subtle shade of pink down at the bottom. This one is called soft pink. So I'm using Karen Simply Soft because it knits up wonderfully and it can go through the washer and dryer. You don't have to block it. You don't have to worry about doing anything fancy with it. It's great for giving gifts and it really is Simply Soft. This one is the Gray Heather. I tend to go for the Gray Heather. Uh, lighter grays are nice, but they do show dirt a lot. Now granted, this one will show a little bit of dirt down at the bottom, but I do like the darker gray to let this colors pop against it. So a little bit of a medium gray, and then this nice shade of rose, what are they calling it again? Soft pink. I wanna call it, uh, I keep wanting to call it a rose pink, but whatever. So these are gonna look really nice together. Oh, and this, cause it, it, it's so quick and simple of a knit and it's so enjoyable. I knit this up in maybe two hours. So that's pretty good. I had a lot of fun doing that. I didn't wanna stop, but I do wanna finish that three color cashmere cowl so I need to get I need to get on the ball now technically you're seeing this on January 2nd but I'm actually recording it on Sunday so I still have Sunday and Monday to finish the three color cashmere cowl before the new year starts because you know that was my goal last week was to get it done but because I've got a crazy week coming up I had to record just a little bit early so I'm kind of cheating on the whip it Wednesday so when I was doing my Christmas sewing, I did uh, go a little crazy on some ornaments. Back in 2011, I made the top half of these ornaments, but I hadn't actually gone ahead and put the back on or added the bell or anything like that. I had the eyes on and everything. And what had happened is, is I was using some of my red Christmas scraps for the hat of Santa. And then I 
when I got to the point where I had to put the back on, I realized that Santa's hat folds down like this. So I really should have had the same fabric for the front and the back. And back in 2011, I was a little concerned about following more of the pattern and making sure everything looked the same and the way it should be. But here in 2018, going into 2019, I said, forget it. And I just went ahead and put red on the back of all of them. I did find a couple other of red fabrics that was a little bit of fun. These are like, they're little ornaments. They look like cookie cutouts to me. So some of them have two different colors or reds on them and I'm okay with that. And then this one has a solid with that. And I'm, once again, I am perfectly fine with that. These ornaments just need to have, I need to go get a ribbon from Joann's to finish these off so that I can, I wanna uh, tack this down. And I figured it'd be easier to tack it down and put the ribbon on at the same time. That way I'm not trying to just tack it down a little here or where it might show. So if I go ahead and put the ribbon on it at the same time, it'll, it'll just hold it all together and make the process easier. Now this pattern, it was a free pattern back in 2011, but the lady that had written the pattern and put it out online, a couple people had told her that it was an Eleanor Burns pattern, I believe, and it was in one of her books, and that she was, you know, infringing on someone else's pattern. She didn't want to, you know, do anything wrong with copyright, so she did take the design down. I happen to have these already done, so like I said, I'd, I'd made them in 2011, so I didn't have to worry about that. I don't have the pattern anymore, but I was showing these off in the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop Mafia group on Facebook, and someone mentioned that, hey, it looks like, let me see, do I have a red one? That it looks like a Dresden block. So I'm going to play with that a little bit and see if I can figure out how to stitch these together because you know you're supposed to be able to flip flop your ruler like you cut out this one and then you cut out this one so I want to see if I can mess with it at design a little bit and figure out how to do it with the Dresden and then I think it'll be perfectly fine to go ahead and share with you guys so that you can make some too and you I just love to have a little jingle bell on it if you have if the animals brush against a tree or the kids play with it or we have air conditioning on a lot at Christmas time the the air conditioning will blow it so that'll be kind of fun so I have these Santas done and then once again Laurelyn on the mom and pop quilt shop had received one of these Santas as a Christmas present so I thought oh I remember I had these set up in my Pinterest a few years back these were in a magazine for free in 2014 well uh, free of course if you purchased a magazine but I'll put a link down below to the e pattern central I believe it's on it was it was a paid for pattern I think I paid a dollar ninety nine for it it's paper pieced just like these were paper pieced but they came out so cute once again I need to put a ribbon up here and you put a little button to hold the ribbon down to you know cover it up to make it look nice and pretty so when I purchased ribbon I'll purchase it enough for all of them so I made a bunch of these too now I made these are pretty much I think they're all identical I had this can you see the little swirly on the fabric there and that's the same fabric for the mustache and I used the same fabric for the brim of his hat too so it's just simple and easy to use the same white fabric for everyone they all have a little bit of a character because all the mustaches are similar but slightly different. I think I ended up making 12 of these, so these were fun to work on on Christmas. And there you go. I think there's 11 here. I have one more hiding over there. When I stitched it down, I think I missed the seam right here, so it just needs to be hand tacked in. And, you know, I'll just keep that one for myself. But I'm all set for little tuck-ins for Christmas cards for next year now, right? need to finish them and I need to not lose them between now and Christmas I think I need to get a Christmas box so I can keep things like this in it so when I go to I, I love giving ornaments as little extras for Christmas especially if you're just doing maybe a card or to put it on a gift or something and then every year that person can either think of you or grumble about you depending on your relationship and they'll have something to enjoy for many years I believe that is all I've worked on this week. Next week, I'm going to work on more of these quilts and see how many of these tops. I might only get one top put together, but 
I don't know, I just want to see how many I can get put together out of this fabric that I've already cut before I pull more out. Maybe the next one I'll do a girl version and then I'll see if I can get some gender neutral ones going. I want to go to Joann's and do a little fabric shopping, but I want to make sure I utilize what's in my stash first before I go out and start purchasing new stuff. Because if someone else has already cut it into the 1 8 inch, 1 8 inch, that would be a really small quilt, an eighth of a yard strips, it makes it so much easier to cut these. But, I, but once again, put on some YouTube and I'll just cut up my scraps and it'll work out really well. Finish my cashmere cowl, work on this. This is going to be my backup knitting project. I have a couple other things I need to start first, but as we were just getting into the new year, I just wanted to work on this a little bit. So you plan on seeing a lot of knitting coming up this year, but you're gonna also see a lot of quilting, so it should balance it out. Are you guys doing anything exciting into the new year? Many times the knitters do a Christmas Eve and a New Year's Eve cast on. They have what they call a cast on party where they cast on either like everyone might make the same shawl or we might say, okay, we're all gonna cast on a shawl on New Year's Eve. Most of the time they're doing socks because the knitters just love to make socks. I haven't bought the yarn for Robbie's socks for next year and I want a little break from knitting socks for a little bit first. I have many other projects to work on, so I don't I won't be missing those. So yeah, they do that. I don't think I've ever heard any quilters do it. I, I've heard the cross stitchers, they do they have a little bit of startitis where they like to start a lot of projects and they'll do that into the new year. I just think it's kind of nice to know that on New Year's Eve you're sitting down with um with a bunch of your crafting peers throughout the world, if not just your country, and you're all working on a similar project at the same time. I just think that's kinda awesome. All right, guys, that's it for me this week. Let me know down in the comments what you guys are working on. Hey, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And if you want YouTube to give you a notification and let you know what's coming up on my channel, go ahead and ring that little bell, and then you'll get a notification from YouTube, and they'll tell you when I put up a new video. All right, guys, have a great week. Bye.